Hello and welcome back to the channel, uh, long time no see, um, it's been quite a while since I've uploaded so in a few days time I will upload a kind of summary of quarters 1, 2 and 3 just to catch you up on where I'm at with languages but today I will be just going over my language goals for October. First up is Korean and the topic exam is coming up in a couple of weeks so on the 14th and yeah the first two weeks of this month is essentially just preparation for that. So first of all, the topic exam is the test of proficiency in Korean and it's like the standardized test, government test for Korean language and yeah, just a preface with that. The first week will be focused on more kind of immersion, so lots of reading using Link, lots of listening through the use of podcasts and also the audio lessons from Talk to Me in Korean just to kind of go over a decent amount of grammar. The main reason for using Link um, will be to increase my reading speed. When I've done past papers, although, although I haven't done that many, um, the, the trickiest part is actually time management, reading speed and also vocabulary. So through Link I think I can improve that. It's a bit, bit late in the day but um, even if it's just a little bit, it will make a, hopefully make a difference when it comes to exam day. I'll be using podcasts for a similar reason but for the listening section. My reading comprehensions got considerably better over the last couple of months. But in the exam, you have to listen to stuff really quickly, process it, and then answer the questions right away. So again, if I can improve it a small amount, um, hopefully it will give me a chance to uh, at least not completely fail. With Talk to Me in Korean, the main reason I'll be using it as it's just more, more of a digestible way of uh, kind of covering grammar that I haven't studied before. As the test is predominantly a comprehension test and not really a production test, even if I've just got a passive knowledge of the grammar, it'll give me at least a chance to differentiate between different points and answer the questions. I'm not hoping to master these grammar points like at the moment, but yeah, if I can get a passive knowledge, that would be great. And also I can listen to these lessons while multitasking, so I can go for a walk and listen to them, I can just relax, lay in my bed, I can do some exercise, whatever it may be, I can um, at least, uh, it's a bit more easy to uh, spend a decent amount of time on rather than say just reading a textbook, which can be quite fatiguing and often leads to me just wanting to stop, so it's good in that respect. Week two will be centered a lot more on past papers and I've kind of left it a bit late in the day to do past papers, well a lot of them anyway. But the main thing is my, as I said before, my listening and reading kind of comprehension isn't quite there yet. And the good thing about the topic exam is that, um, yeah, there's loads of uh, past papers available. To be honest, I don't think I'll pass level three this time round. But by doing these past papers, I should be able to um, better gauge exactly where I'm at. And um, yeah, I won't. I can kind of manage expectations going into exam day. Overall, I. I felt that I've improved considerably in my Korean. That doesn't mean that I'm good by any stretch, but um, my study is paying off and it at least gives me uh, faith that going forward, I'm, I'm kind of going in the right direction with it. So moving into the second half of the month, I will be switching my focus over to Japanese. And the reason for this is the um, JLPT, so the Japanese Language Proficiency Test, which is just the Japanese equivalent to topic. It's coming up in December and I need to start my preparation for that. It's in the first week of December, so I'll have about six weeks following topic, and um, it's not like a really short period of time, but it's also not that long either. So if I'm gonna study, it's gotta be pretty intensive, and if I get my act together, I think I stand a chance of passing, but it really is gonna tell um, how much motivation I have, and um, yeah, basically how much I actually get done in the end. My last two attempts I've failed the N2 and first time it was by one mark and last time it was by four marks. From that I, I know I'm not a million miles away from passing but I definitely need to kind of up my game in, in explicit preparation for the exam. The last two times I've kind of gone into the exam doing general study, seeing how it goes. This time I think I'm going to do a lot more um, kind of like use textbooks that are actually created for prep for this test so hopefully they'll give me a better chance of passing and it means I won't have to take it again. Another thing is my Japanese is a decent amount better than my Korean 
So when it comes to actually study, I can use a bit more variety of resources. I can watch films, I can uh, listen to a lot more varied content on YouTube, um, I can read newspapers, so it's still going to be a struggle, but um, I think just in terms of pure quantity of study, I find it a lot more manageable than with Korean. I would say that language exams are a bit of a double-edged sword to prepare for. On one hand, it gives you a really clear goal on what to focus on, which is great. Um, it means you don't have to wake up and kind of think what you're motivated to study, and you're never going to get to the point where you just outright don't know what to study. But on the other hand, it does make you feel a bit as though you're on rails. You don't have a lot of freedom in terms of what you can choose. And this can lead to burnout, again, because you associate the language study pretty much exclusively, exclusively with the exam rather than just having fun and enjoying it. So there's definitely pros and cons. Um, I think at the moment it's beneficial for me. And at the end of the day, I can also just not take the next exam. I can, I, I'm choosing to do these exams, so there's nothing kind of inherently bad about them. But that's kind of the path I've chosen for the moment, and that makes, in a way, the, my, my goals for this month very easy to, to kind of select. That's about it for today. Um, quite a short one, I know, but as I said at the beginning of the video, I will be having a bit more of a, a long video, a long format update on what I've been doing over the last, like, nine months, and uh, kind of get you up to speed on where I'm at, and um, hopefully be more more regular videos as I keep saying every time I make one and but yeah if I can do that fantastic and either way I'll be seeing you soon for that update so bye for now and catch you in the next one